Hi, Kathy. I'm Annika. Would you please help me on the question about the ear? Question. <laughs> um. Thank you, Annika. Where are my glasses? Oi. You see, this old age and these eyes that don't work too well. All right. Two types of hearing loss occurs in humans. You get conductive hearing loss. That means that the sound vibrations can't be conducted through the outer and the middle ear. All right, and then you have sensory neural hearing loss. This is when the sound waves in the inner ear cannot be converted to an impulse. Or, remember the or, when the impulses cannot be transmitted to the brain. So there are two issues here. One is that it's not being converted into an impulse, which means that cochlea is not doing its job or that auditory nerve is not functioning properly, then it can't get to the brain because the brain, the brain has to interpret all of this in the cerebrum. Okay, so the diagram represents the human ear. People, make sure you can label this thing left, right, center, every which way but loose. This is the pinna. Our rule, always label first. B, that is the eardrum. Or, if you want to really be special, you can call it the tympanic membrane. I'm just going to write mem, okay, membrane. This here, it's the group name for these three little bones. This is the hammer, anvil, and stirrup. These are your ossicles, and their job is to amplify sound, okay? That's what they do, they amplify sound. Tell me something. You know when you listen to really, really, really loud music, or you at a, or you shouldn't be at nightclubs, you're younger, you're too young, you shouldn't be drinking. But if you go to nightclub, if by, you've heard about people that have gone to nightclubs, okay? Because I know you would never do that. You're still under 18, or you've just turned 18. You shouldn't be doing that anyway. And you hear this, you walk outside, and your ears go, Gee! that zinging sound in your ears, is because these poor, the ligaments holding those poor little ossicles in place, because remember their job is to amplify sound, have been bombarded with all kinds of bass and noise and sound that they now all tense. And then when you go outside and it's all quiet, they go, they're still vibrating, and then it feels like you can't hear. All right, so it, it's like everything's fuzzy. That's why. These poor little ossicles are being nailed left, right, and center by loud music. All right, D, semicircular canals. All right, they are for balance and equilibrium where your head is in relation to your body along a horizontal plane. So it tells you your speed and your direction. Then you've got the utriculus and the sacculus, which tell you where your head is in relation to gravity. So if you get air sick or, or, or sea sick, it's these little macula in there that are causing it. Alrighty, now, this is the cochlea, and the cochlea has the organs of corti, which are our uh, uh, little receptors, which mechanoreceptors, and that is for hearing. So your semicircular canals, your utricular sacculus, that is for balance. Alright, and that will send messages to... Uh, the cerebellum, whereas the cochlea is for hearing, that goes to the cerebrum. This here is your auditory nerve, and that is the guy that goes jit jit to the brain. All right? G, ha, this is the eustachian tube. Now, the eustachian tube's job is to make sure that the air pressure on this side of the eardrum and this side are equal, balanced. Because the middle ear is filled with air and the outer ear is filled with air. And only if the air pressure is the same on both sides will this eardrum be able to vibrate nicely. And then H, that is the, um, the round window. Now, here's a trick to remember. The oval window is on top, and it starts with an O. The round window is at the bottom, it starts with an R. O comes before R in the alphabet, so O is always on top, and R is always at the bottom, especially if you have a drawing that isn't nice. Okay, something else about your eustachian tubes, what it does is it's to equalize pressure. So you have an ear, nose and throat specialist because these three things are connected okay very often when you get flu 
or you get a bug in your throat, you get uh, pharyngitis, laryngitis, blah, blah, gitis is here, or bronchitis, you get these bugs that go chi 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 and they go into the eustachian tube and you end up with a middle ear infection. Okay, that is this whole middle ear then becomes full of mucus and gunked up, you can't hear properly and you feel terrible. That's also why they will not allow a pilot to fly when they have flu. You don't want that middle ear and the eardrum to burst. Middle ear full of mucus. So, okay, it says give the letter and name of the part that transmits impulses to the brain. So, it's the letter and the part. It is going to be the auditory nerve, which is F. So, F and it is the auditory. Auditory means to hear. Auditory nerve. Okay, allows pressure to equalize between the outer and the middle ear. Well, that I can tell you is the eustachian tube. I can't remember what number, a G. Okay, so it is G and it is the eustachian tube. And I know you're laughing at me by the way I'm pronouncing this, but if you pronounce it the way I'm saying it, then you won't forget how to spell it. All right, the eustachian tube. All right, give only the letters the letter of two structures in the diagram of the ear that when damaged would result in the following. Conductive hearing loss. Well, they told you what conductive hearing loss was. Okay, they say here, it is when the sound vibrations cannot be conducted to the outer and middle ear. So let's look. What's going to conduct that sound wave? It is going to be this eardrum or tympanic membrane and our ossicle. So it's B and C. Okay, so it would be B and C. The eardrum or tympanic membrane and the ossicles. Then sen sensory neural hearing loss. So that's going to be the, the impulses not being converted or not getting to the brain. So that's going to be E, which is the cochlea. The cochlea isn't working, not going to convert those, the sound waves into impulses and the auditory nerve. So it's E and F. That's easy enough, guys. This is a piece of cake, man. Middle ear infections are common cause of hearing loss. Okay, now we've already spoken about that. Um, state one way in which an, a middle ear infection can be treated. Well, come on. All of you at some stage of your lives have had a, a, a middle ear infection. First thing you do is you go to the doctor and he says, oh, here is an antibiotic. So antibiotics, but you can also... Do it by inserting grommets. Ay, ay, ay. What's happening to my pen here? Grommets into the tympanic membrane. All right. Now, something I want to tell you here because it's... It, if I was setting your paper and I was asking something about the ear, I would include this because it, it would mean you applying your knowledge. In babies and little children, that eustachian tube is very, very short. So let's look at our eustachian tube, okay? This is very, very short. It's much shorter than in an adult, which means, remember, the throat and the nose and the middle ear are connected. So the, any bugs that a baby has goes G -g 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 into that middle ear. And it starts to fill up with a gummy-like fluid. And that gummy-like fluid is called gluia. So when, when you have a, a, um, a, when a, when a person gets many ear infections, okay, only when there are many ear infections, or it is a really little child and they keep getting issues, then they're going to say, we need to insert a grommet. Now, what does a grommet look like? Because you need to understand this. A grommet is, now my drawing is not great, so you're just going to have to bear with me here. It has like a central passage here, and then it's got a foot that sort of does this. And then this thing goes all the way through here. Okay, I'm drawing it so that it's like cut in half. Okay, so this is your grommet. And then they put the grommet, they cut a hole, very small little hole. Um, you must remember these grommets are about 2 millimetres, uh, well actually 1.5 to 2 millimetres big. All right, so they make a little cut. So if the eardrum looks like this, 
they make a little cut over here. They suck out all the gunk in the middle ear, which is now here. They suck out all that munk and gunk and, and goo and stuff. They, and mucus, they suck that out. And then they take this little grommet and they stick it and they insert it in here. And this little foot makes sure it doesn't fall out. And that's where it sits. And what it does is it drains everything from the middle ear out to the outer ear. All right. Now, if somebody has a grommet, you should not be swimming and you should definitely not be anywhere where there's dirty water. So no bathing. You can shower. And if you wash your hair, you've got to be careful because you've now got this open hole into your middle ear and you don't want bugs in there. So generally, kids that have grommets are going to then swim with um, uh, earplugs in. And also adults, by the way. All right. Then name the part of the ear where earwax is produced. People, it is the or Dirty canal. Now, something my mother always used to say is you never ever shove anything smaller than your elbow in your ear. Why? Because you shove that wax back and the wax is there as an insect repellent. It's there to clean every, your ear out. That's why you've always got wax coming out. But there's nothing worse than looking at someone sideways and all you can see is five years of ear wax sitting there. It's disgusting. So what you do is you take your finger and a, a towel after you've had a shower and you wipe nicely. You don't stick anything into your ears ever because you shove that wax back. It makes a hardened ball and then you get a ball of wax and you can't hear properly. And people, that is the end of today's show. I can't believe how fast this time's gone. I want to hear from you, all right? So send us those videos. Okay, and you've got, you got so many different ways of doing it. So people... Thank you for watching. I hope I've made a difference. I hope that you're going to slay those exams. I want to hear from you. All right. Have an awesome week. Until next Wednesday. Bye.